Hi, I'm Doug. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about benchmarking at Google Cloud that we do. Um, so I'm going to start by giving an intro into like why we do benchmarking and what our typical workflow is. And then I'll go through some of the tools that we work on. Primarily, I'm going to be talking about Ramble. And then I'll give you a summary after I finish giving you an intro to Ramble. <clears throat> All right, so the team that I work on is um, a mix of HPC focused application engineers, um, general software engineers who don't have a big HPC background and um, scientific domain experts who might know like weather modeling really well or pick codes really well or something like that. Um, we tend to participate in benchmarking of customer RFPs and trying to make sure that our platform is performant for a variety of applications so that when a customer brings an arbitrary application to our platform, we can be confident that it will run well on our systems. Um, in support of those two tasks, we develop tooling, which is what I'm going to talk to you about. As part of benchmarking, I think it's been mentioned many times in this session already, um, and a lot of people probably know this already, but um, reproducibility is really important. It helps to improve productivity on benchmarking because if they're as reproducible as possible, you can compare them more easily when you run the same benchmark in the future. You can also transfer knowledge more easily. Like, um, as I mentioned, we have general software engineers, not HPC experts on our team. So it's a lot easier for them to be able to run a random CFD application. If a CFD person sets it up, and it's reproducible than it is if they have to learn everything from scratch. Um, the same is true transferring knowledge between compute centers. I used to work at Los Alamos National Lab. Um, we have specific applications we care about. People in other compute centers might not know how to do those at all or how to use them. And so making our experiments reproducible is really helpful to transfer a benchmark we care about to a different compute center that might be interested in using it to evaluate their system. Um, the tools that we develop are not necessarily for just platform evaluation. That is one subset of benchmarking. It's a very important subset of benchmarking. Um, I kind of am of the belief that if a tool isn't useful to somebody, they're not going to add their application to it. Like scientists, as an example, they're not going to bring their benchmark to um, a benchmarking framework or their workload to a benchmarking framework if it is just platform evaluation, because maybe they aren't invested in platform X being evaluated. They're more interested in what they can do scientifically with the framework. Um, but we have tools that we're focused on making it um, making benchmarks reproducible regardless of what you're doing with it, if it's for performance analysis, um, parameter studies, or evaluating platforms, or whatever else you want to do with benchmarking. <clears throat> um, this is a typical workflow. I've used this workflow in many different roles before. Maybe your workflow is slightly different, but I think if it's similar, you should be able to identify boxes that are different and you would know what um, changes relative to what we do, but I'm going to go over this a bit and show you how the different tools play into this. So on the left is setting up the compute environment. In a lot of compute centers, this is done by sysadmins and infrastructure ex experts, not the scientists. So they're not necessarily going to take part in setting up the environment. They're just going to SSH into a system that's already set up. Then there's planning an experiment. Then once you have a plan, that's basically like what you want to do. You might be setting up um, an HPL run that you want on a full cluster because you're trying to evaluate acceptance criteria, or maybe you want to evaluate the impact of some parameter on a bunch of, or the impact of a bunch of different values of your parameter on the scientific output of an application. So then once you have your experiments planned, you would install the application and it might be that you want to check different compilers as an example. So that's why that is there in multiple places. Then you get the inputs if you need them, configure the experiment because it depends on the compiled application and the inputs, you run it, and then you analyze it. If you're not happy with the result, you might plan more experiments and continue this in a loop until you're done. The tools that I'm gonna talk about to help aid this process 
are Google Cloud HPC Toolkit on the left, and then Ramble, which relies heavily on SPAC, which I'll talk about. Hopefully a lot of you know SPAC. Um, I'm not really gonna introduce it. I can give a high level like overview of it, but um, mostly I'm gonna be talking about Ramble. Uh, Google Cloud HPC Toolkit is an open source tool. I've got the link there um, on the top. It's on GitHub. It is an engine for taking a YAML description of infrastructure you want to create in Google Cloud and deploying it for you. It makes reproducible environments very easy, and you can just give the YAML file to somebody else who has HPC Toolkit, and they can deploy the exact same infrastructure in their GCP environment. Um, it takes a YAML file, which is that blueprint on the left. You run it through the engine, which is the red box, which reads some Terraform, Packer, and Scripps modules, pieces them together into a more complicated deployment, which is that deployment folder, which then you run using some Terraform commands, and it will deploy it for you and create the environment in the cloud for you. All right, now I'm going to talk for the rest of the talk about Ramble, which was the big part around the benchmarking circle. <clears throat> Ramble is written in Python. It is multi-platform because it's written in Python. It is heavily based on SPAC, and that's intentional. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, it, I call it an experimentation framework instead of a benchmarking framework because um, I think not all scientists care about benchmarking, but all scientists care about experimentation, and benchmarking is a small subset of experimentation. So it's useful to be inclusive to everybody. Um, it's open source, it's on GitHub. Uh, and then some of the things that it provides before I get into the details are a flexible temp templating engine um, and a DSL just like SPAC does for describing pack packages. It describes um, an application and the workloads that it contains, which are kind of, I'm using them as the building blocks of creating an experiment from an application. Um, Piecing that part together with um, being open source, you can also get standardized definitions of how workloads are configured and executed. Um, probably one of the first questions that makes sense to ask about this is why do we have a new framework? Um, I evaluated a lot of other frameworks like Reframe, Build, Test, and Pavilion. Um, on top of those three frame frameworks, there's custom testing harnesses all over the place. Like different applications have their own testing harness. Um, most compute centers have a testing harness that they wrote for some system evaluation that they had to go through. Uh, one of the big differences that I think exists in Ramble versus a lot of these other frameworks is that those frameworks tend to focus on specifically system evaluation and acceptance or testing functionality of a specific application, not necessarily like general experimentation. Um, so I was trying to design something that focused more on an application and the building blocks and then leaving the rest of the experiment configuration abstracted, which I'm hopeful that you'll see in a minute. Um, and this doesn't, like I didn't write this at all to begin with for systems acceptance. This was more like, I want to see um, a scaling study that differs on one platform versus another, like Cascade Lake and Milan, as an example, they have different um, ranks per node that you would want to run. And you want to tweak those parameters and run the same, the same general experiment on both of them quickly. Um, in addition to that, I purposefully built this to be kind of a, an experimentation complement to SPAC as a package manager. So it uses SPAC heavily underneath. SPAC isn't the only thing that it needs to use um, to build packages, but the infrastructure and how it's coded is almost identical to SPAC. Okay, so to begin with, since it's a complement to SPAC, it has standardized application definitions. Um, in SPAC, there are standardized package definitions, Python-based classes that describe how an application should be, or a package, not an application, should be compiled and installed. In Ramble, there are application definitions because we center around running experiments. And I don't really have experiments that test a library. I only have test, like things that test applications with inputs right now. Um, that's not to say that we couldn't write other things. It's very flexible, so that would be fine too. But um, 
currently I call them applications. Uh, some of the application language features that are in this standardized application definition, which I'll show you in a minute, are input files, executables, figures of merit, and success criteria. So you could see how you might piece together um, a command that is part of running an experiment from an application. You can piece that with input files to generate workloads, and then figures of merit and success criteria are things that you extract once the experiment is done to determine what you should track as far as performance metrics and um, if the experiment is considered a success or a failure. Here is an example of Gromax, which is one of the applications that we have in the GitHub repo. Um, I've color coded parts that get pieced together. Um, so you can see there's a, a list of some default software descriptions. These are just defaults. They're like tested suggest suggestions to start with, but you can change them within the configuration, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, then there are executables, which are just arbitrary commands that you run for this application. They're basically the building blocks for creating workloads. You can describe input files. Then from executables and input files, you describe a workload. A workload is one or more executables with zero or more inputs. And that is what you would build an experiment from. Then there are workload variables, which are things that you might want to expose to users as things that they could modify to change aspects of the experiment, like physical parameters or the size of the workload are good examples of that for this in this Gromax example that I'm showing you. And then figures of merit are things that the application outputs or things that you have available that you might care about from a performance or correctness point of view within the application. They can be whatever you want. Um, here I'm tracking core time, wall time, and simulated nanoseconds per day, which are just generic Gromax outputs. There, this is actually like a simplified version of Gromax. So if you go to the GitHub repo and you look at it, it has way more inputs and workloads that are defined in it. Um, and it has a lot more figures of merit as well. All right, so now I've shown you some of the like Ramble specific building blocks. I'm gonna show you uh, the workflow within Ramble. This is a high level picture. We're gonna go through all these different blocks in just a minute, one by one to show you what they do. But from your perspective, you would create a workspace. You configure this workspace. The workspace is like a self-contained um, representation of the experiments you wanna run some set of experiments you want to run. You set it up, and when you set it up, a bunch of things happen under the hoods in Ramble, which I'll talk about when we get there. Run them and then analyze them. At the bottom, those are the commands that you would run, and like you can literally just run those and it should work. Um, you might run into errors and have to go back through and tweak stuff if you set it up wrong, but there are examples in the repo that you could go through to um, play with this. All right, so when you set up a workspace, as I said earlier, it is a self-contained representation of some experiments. Um, every workspace is independent. If you're familiar with SPAC, uh, workspaces are kind of like SPAC environments as far as like how they relate to the tools independently. Um, so you create a workspace through the ramble workspace create command. In a workspace, you have these directories, which I, I'm showing you at the bottom. Uh, the yellow one is the configs. That's the only one that contains anything by default. It contains a ramble.yaml, which is the description of what you want this workload or this workspace to do. And then an execute experiment.tpl file, which is a template script that you want rendered in the experiments. Um, I'll show you more details about those in just a minute. There are also directories to house the inputs that you want for all of your different experiments. The software representations for your experiments, which are actually SPAC environments, and then the experiment directories, which are the directories where your experiments will be executed inside. Here is an example of the workspace config. Um, this is focusing primarily on the application portion of it. If you run workspace create, you'll see a slightly different setup of this, but it should be pretty obvious where to inject this bit of code to show you what how it might work. Um, so I'll talk about this a little bit because it's kind of important. But um, in the config file, you can describe variables. You can make up whatever variables you want. The variables are not specific to Ramble. Ramble has a couple default variables that it will create for you just to 
make sure that you can do things that are sensible, like it requires in ranks, in nodes, processes per node, and in threads to be defined. You don't have to define them. If you don't define them, it will set them all to one, and that's fine. But um, on top of that, you can generate a large set of experiments. So what I'm showing you here is WARF v3, like the 3.9.1.1 version of WARF, um, running with a CONUS two and a half kilometer input. That's the workload that we're running. We're trying to do a scaling study that's one through 32 nodes on two different platforms. C2 and C2D are Google Cloud platforms. C2 is Cascade Lake, C2D is Milan. On C2, we have 30 processes per node. On C2D, we have 56 processes per node. So you can see that like that's a pretty complicated thing that you would wanna run. You've got six different um, experiments within two different partitions and they have different processes per node and you have to change the number of ranks for each of these. So um, there's this vector syntax that you can use in Ramble. At the top, I've got processes per node and partition. These variables are scoped within the application WARF v3, so they apply to everything within WARF v3, but they're not set this way for a different application in the same workspace if you wanted to use a different application. Then within experiments, I'm defining a scaling study. The scaling study will be named scaling study partition with the number of nodes, nodes in it. So that's the generated experiment name that we'll get from this template. In the experiment, I'm defining this variable in nodes. It's going to be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. It could be whatever I want here, but that's length 6. Then I have a, the, I have a syntax in Ramble that allows you to extract variables that you defined to create a matrix from them. And you can define however, however many matrices that you want. In this case, I'm defining a single matrix using in nodes. So it's not really a matrix. It's a 1 by 6, so it's basically a vector. but um, I'm doing this so that I pull it out. Once I pull that out, any remaining vectors get zipped together. I've got the logic down here in these bullet points. So the remaining vectors get zipped together. So I end up with um, two values, two tuples that um, are 30 and C2 and 56 and C2D. And then those get crossed with the um, matrix that I extracted. So this value of six. So now I'm going to generate. 12 experiments from this bit of YAML here, do a 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 node run with each of those two configurations on C2 and C2D. Um, okay, that was the config part. The next part is the TPL file. I call them template files. You can name them whatever you want. You can have as many of them as you want. Um, there are little bits of uh, syntax that Ramble uses to reference variables. It's the curly braces because it does it like Python string um, expansion with uh, some extra logic on it, but it does it like Python string expansion. So there are predefined things like spac setup and command. Spac setup evaluates to sourcing spac to make sure that it's in your path and activating the environment that you want to use for that um, specific experiment. So that changes based on the experiments you want. Ramble also supports um, non-spec experiments. If you're using a non-spec experiment, this is an empty string. So in those experiments, it's fine. It won't try to use spec on things it's not spec. Then command is all of the commands that you need to run an experiment within this application, but they're going to be specified for that experiment. So the one, two, and four node runs that I showed you on this slide would end up having different values for in ranks. As I I didn't talk about this, but if you look at this line here where in ranks is defined, it has math in it. Ramble will evaluate that math. So every experiment will have in ranks. That is the number of nodes times the number of processes per node on that experiment. Um, it generally supports basic math evaluation. It has um, exponents. It doesn't support arbitrary Python, but that's something that some people have requested. So maybe at some point we'll add that. Um, Okay, you've configured a workspace now. You have a template file and you have a YAML file. Then you can run workspace setup. When you run workspace setup, Ramble will parse the config file. It will download whatever input files it needs. That's the um, execute input phases part on the top right. Then right below that, it will process the software phases. As part of that, it installs whatever necessary compilers you, you required but were not already existing as far as SPAC could see them. It will create SPAC environments for your experiments. 
using those environments, it will install the software and concretize all of the, the environments for you. Um, and then it will define whatever variables it needs to that are related to the SPAC environments, like maybe paths to the SPAC package locations. Um, then it generates experiments. It doesn't run them at this phase. It just creates directories for all of them and it renders the template files that you asked for into the different experiment directories. The last bit that it does is it creates a script that's called all experiments, which runs some command, one for every one of the experiments that you requested it to use. Um, that will be used to execute the experiments in the next step. Then when you run the experiments, there are two entry points to run this. I'm showing you on the on the left what the um, workspace looks like after you set it up. So in the red box, you can see all of the different experiments that would have been generated based on the config file that I showed you a couple slides ago um, and how every one of them has an execute experiment script in it. Then there's also a single software um, SPAC environment that gets created because it's based on application and workload currently. In the future, we might change it to be specific to each of the experiments so that they can change things that they need to. Um, there are ways to make it unique to every experiment right now, but it's a little bit clunky just to make sure you're aware. Um, so depending on those two, the configs, the ramble.yaml and the execute experiment, you would execute the experiment sequentially or submit them to a workload manager. That's something that you can configure in the ramble.yaml and the execute experiment.tpl file in this specific example. Um, I have currently made the choice purposefully to not bake in batch support into Ramble. Instead, I've exposed it to you so that if you had a different system, like let's say you've got Slurm, you can run it under Slurm. You just configure a couple lines in them. If you've got PBS, you can run it as well. You just configure a couple lines in these files and then it will submit jobs to those systems for you. Um, same with LSF and whatever other workload manager you want, Flux, any of them should work. Then after you run your workloads, or your experiments within your workspace, uh, you have to wait for them to finish. Once they're done running, you can analyze them. So Ramble has a Ramble workspace analyze that parses all of the experiments that you described in the config file and extracts the figures of merit for each of them independently. It takes all of them and writes a summary. It can write it in text, YAML, or JSON format currently. Text is like the most user approachable, but the least descriptive. It just gives you a high level overview of what happened. The other ones give you a lot more information and are intended to be more reproducible. You can also archive workspaces so that you can have Ramble extract the important bits of a workspace so that you can share it with somebody else if you want to. Um, yeah, okay, so, so far I've talked about Ramble and benchmarking in general at Google. Um, it's, it's intended to help improve reproducibility and sharing benchmarks across different compute centers or with people who are interested in using a different application. Um, it's what we're using currently. Uh, we rely heavily on HPC Toolkit for our infrastructure as well. Um, we're on GitHub. Please go look at it if you're interested and feel free to submit pull requests or ask questions or whatever, whatever sounds good. Um, here's a link to it if you would like to go and play with it. And that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if you could hear the applause, but there was a big applause in the room. Um, okay, do we have any questions in the room? Mm, no. Um, so in terms of like open source, uh, so you, at the moment you just uh, accept pull requests or what's your what's your model for the future? Yeah, we like, uh, we haven't had any external contributions yet. We just open sourced in December. So we've only been out for a little over two months, but um, currently our team is small. We have two people, three people who've contributed to it so far um, internally. I think we'd be happy to look at pull requests. And in the future, I think if it makes sense to develop closer relationships with specific compute centers who are interested in it, um, 
we would like that in case people are in the SPAC Slack, I'm in there a lot. So if you have questions and you want to just chat, feel free to ping me in there too. Yep. Um, so I can say that we are already collaborating um, with Doc on, on the like, um, DOE uh, side, that's Livermore, and also um, from the Rican side uh, in Japan. So we're working with Doc um, to bring that to practice um, and integrate it into some of our future um, benchmarking like um, platform, essentially. Um, so that will be one part, how to do continuous uh, benchmarking uh, in the future, hopefully. Um, so um, he's not alone with his like two people at Google <laughs> and, and be hopeful for good collaboration. And if people here in the room are interested, just join us, um, contact us, contact Doug, uh, would be great to get some support there as well.